Welcome back peeps. We're up super early this morning, like before the sun's even coming up because we got a ton of work to do. And check it out, it is super frosty out here. But luckily, inside the van, while all our insulation and our heater's going, it's super toasty inside of here. But hurry up and get inside because you're letting all the heat out. So the plan for this week is to get this here, times two mixing valves installed that come off our heat exchanger plates, run through and give us our hot water to our shower lines, as well as our sink lines and get them all set up somehow so they're accessible so we can set the actual water temperature that goes to our shower and our tap. And to be honest with you, I actually thought this was gonna be a really easy task of just joining our PEX lines to here, crimping them on, and mounting this all in place so that it's accessible. Until I started looking at these mixing valves and realizing there's absolutely no mounting spots on these. So how do we get this in there so that I can turn these and they be nice and secure and not gonna wobble all over the place or wear out our lines? I swear, the most exhausting part of the van build is using the old gray matter to try and figure out different custom solutions for every single step that we do on this build. Now before we actually get started on installing these mixing valves, I want to address a few questions that keep coming up in our comment section, as well as one that came up a couple times from our last heater install. So the first one is, when we installed this heater, I spoke about the fact that when we were outside of the van, and there's like hardly any diesel smell, like almost nothing, and we're inside a tent. So the question was, hey, if you're gonna be running that thing inside there, make sure you have a carbon monoxide tester because that stuff will sneak up on you and kill you, obviously. So with this heater, we are not actually gonna be running it for two reasons. First is we're inside this tent, so we don't want the carbon monoxide poisoning or the potential of, as well as I did mention that this battery here that we we're using to run it off of. So now we're just gonna use a starting battery from the van itself, because we don't actually own our house batteries yet. So this battery is not necessarily made for low long-term draws of amperage. This is made for a quick amp draw of starting the vehicle, and that's all that battery is made for. It's not actually a house battery, and we don't want to be using it all the time because this is the Mercedes battery, and that could be expensive. We end up killing this thing just because we want to run the furnace. So we will continue with our double ceramic heaters that you see in the background here. We got one there and one behind you. And honestly, it's keeping it super toasty in here anyways. So just gonna continue that path. The number two question I get, and I've got this one a lot, is what is the cost of this van build vent? And that's something I wanna get to near the end or at the end when the van's all done. I can calculate everything together and tell you what we spent on what items and so on and so forth. I just don't wanna take the time in each of our individual videos to have that conversation about price. But I will tell you right now that I planned this for like three years before we actually bought the van and started building the van. And without doing any calculations off the top of my head, I'm gonna tell you, I'm easily double the budget that I planned. And it's all the small stuff that keeps catching up to you. The nuts, the bolts, the fasteners, the things that when you're planning it, you're like, ah, oh, they're only two bucks a piece, we won't worry about it. Well, that two bucks a piece makes a big difference when all of a sudden you find out you need like 900 of them. And that two dollar piece suddenly became like a two or three thousand dollar piece. Just something to be aware of. And number three, this one I actually kind of find funny because everybody keeps asking, how many man hours have you put into the build so far? That's a really tough one for me to answer, but I find it hilarious because of the fact that we're in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, but it all depends on how you kept it. Are you talking just the time I spent building it, which is probably the lowest number of it all, or the time that I spent sitting here doing exactly this, around thinking let's get this cleaned up so we can get this project started because yeah this alone is a huge time consumer on the whole build process as well and by the time the van's all cleaned out and ready to rock I now go to the garage 
and start with the cleaning of our countertops because typically we pile all our parts onto this countertop during the project and while cleaning out the van. Because the last thing we want is to get set up on our table and start introducing all our new products and having a massive mess behind my head. And the final note is, by the time I'm done cleaning everything, I'm usually an absolute mess and my dares wear needs to be cleaned again. And then once I do have that project all figured out on how I'm gonna build it and put it into the van, I gotta work with you guys and the camera to find out how the heck are we gonna record it. And that's ours all by itself, not including the editing time. The other comment was, hey, it's a great series, love the build, everything like this. Too bad it's just a little bit slow. And well, you asked for it, as day-to-day -day life still exists for me, just the same as it does for you. And lots of that stuff just takes priorities, like getting that boy out for his walk. Because, well, some of you commented more of him. So, we got that too. We're nailing it all in one video, peeps. Let me tell you, by the time we're all cleaned up, all our tasks are done, and we're set up ready to record, I'm already freaking exhausted and honestly ready for a nap. Just like what Winston's doing right now. Sleepy head. Yeah, you got grass sticking out of your mouth. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep moving forward because, well, we need to get this finished, my friends. And if you have just tuned in and this is the first video you've ever watched of Dare's Drives, I do apologize that it took us like six or seven minutes before we got to the point of installing these mixing valves. But if you've hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, you've been following our series along, this all starts making sense. And I'm just addressing a few elephants that are in the room that needed to be addressed. And there's actually one more. One of our subscribers actually commented saying, hey, could you eat another Big Mac for me during your break? Because my wife has been on a low fat, low carb type diet. I'm not allowed to eat that kind of stuff. So I'm watching and living vicariously through you, Jeff. So, I'm gonna take one for the team here. Thank you very much. Okay. So this one's for you, David D. It even has bacon. But don't worry, you probably wouldn't like it. But enough messing around. Let's get to work and get these mixing valves installed. So, as you can see, we got a table full of products and I can't go through them all, and we do have more videos coming up about plumbing, so I'll talk more detail about putting your pinch clamps on, how they mount properly to your hose and your fittings, and I'll just kind of quickly show you the products we're gonna use for this, and we're gonna be more detailed around installing this mixing valve and hooking our two lines into the exchanger plates, because that's the focus of this video here. So the first thing that I wanna show you is where we're putting these mixing valves. So I want them to be right beside our fan in this hole here that we can kind of make a cabinet that drops down and they will be accessible so that we can change the temperature on our water heat to each individual tap, shower, sink. As you can see on the end of this is you just turn it and it sets your temperature colder and hotter just like your standard mixing valve. Pretty straightforward stuff. The unfortunate part, like mentioned at the beginning of the video, is they come with no mounts or brackets or anything like that to mount them in place. So I spent hours trying different ways of mounting these. Now one of the options I took was just mounting it to our aluminum using the stainless steel bracketing and putting rubber in between just so you wouldn't get the heat transfer. But when you bolt those on, there's no way to put rubber between the bolt and that. So the heat from this, because these do get hot, is gonna go right into that aluminum framing and it will just spread throughout all this aluminum framing that it's attached to. And that's not a good thing because that's gonna make all of our framing warm, spreading heat inside the van, as well as you'll lose heat on your water so you won't get as hot as water because it's drawing all the heat into your frame. So you can't play that game. So I started taking different sizes of wood, trying to get it to sit flat and then strap it down 
with our galvanized steel. I also tried using insulated clamps like this to wrap it around it and then clamp it down, which kind of worked, but I still didn't like the way it looked. It just didn't look clean enough. And after hours and hours and hours of researching how people install these or mount these when they put them into their hot water systems, it looks like from the pictures and videos I could find is they literally just let them hang off the PEX tubing itself in multiple circumstances, I've seen this. So what I've noticed with these mixing valves is on the top of the handle, there's a screw right in the middle of the handle. So if you remove this screw, you'll see that this handle slides right off and it just sits on a spline shaft. And this collar here, around here, is smaller than the handle itself. Which means I took a piece of eighth inch plywood, put a hole in it, and we're able to stick that through the hole nice and tight so now it has a spot to rest the head of the unit and we can just put our cap right back on top. And then it can still sit on the lines here, but also have support at the front head of it. So we took some two by two pieces of wood, some eighth inch thick plywood, built a box with a couple holes in it and painted it all white. And then we adhered it using our PL glue that we've tested in multiple circumstances in the freezer and in the furnace. And we know it holds up well and we adhered it to the framing where we want it to sit. And now you can see how our spot looks compared to what it was before. I do have to leave the clamps on for 24 hours and we just finished adhering this at like 4 a.m. on Sat no, sorry, 4 a.m. on Sunday morning, which means I have to wait till 4 a.m. Monday morning before we can take it off, which tells you why we didn't get our video on Sunday again, I guess. But now we can take our mixing valve, put it through the hole, and then put our end on it and we now have access to our mixing valve from this side and it'll be nice and solid. So the reason for these mixing valves is so you can control the temperature of that hot water coming out of your taps so you don't actually burn your skin off when you touch it because the water coming out of those heat exchangers can be upwards of 190 degrees Fahrenheit and you don't want to be touching that. So this is going to give you more control to have a more usable hot water system inside your vent. Now with these mixing valves, they do come with the Rixen kit. One comes with the Rixen kit. And when you get it, it actually looks like this. It does not come with the fittings on the end. And it's just this one piece right here. Now I ordered two of course, because of our system, having two separate water tanks. But you will have to buy some fittings like this, which are three quarter MPT with half inch barb on the other end. And they just get Teflon and thread in, just like all the other fittings we did on the Rickson's hydronic heating system. Now the way these mixing valves work, and they are labeled cold and hot, so it'll take a cold line in directly from your fresh water tank. It'll take a hot line in directly from your heat exchangers, and then it'll send a hot line out at whatever desired temperature you chose it to be at. And then you feed this hot line back down through to whatever tap you're running it to. And to install all this together, we got some PEX line. We got red for hot, blue for cold. You need a whole bunch of pinch clamps. You're gonna need the tool to pinch those said pinch clamps. You need some half inch straight barbed fittings, some three way or T barbed fittings, as well as some 90 degree bent barb fittings as well. Now for these, you can get the left-handed bends or the right-handed bends, it's really not gonna make a difference. Then I do have some on and off valves as well, just so we can shut the water down, but I don't think we're actually gonna install it at this stage of the game. But, let's go to the van and get this all installed. But check this out, we started this video Saturday morning, and it was like almost minus 20 C outside, and now it's like plus six again. Welcome to my city. But check it out, all that cleaning we did just to have a whole nother new mess all over our floor. But, as you'll see, we now have one of the mixing valves in so we can access it from this side. And it's already pretty secure, not to mention it hasn't been hooked up to the PEX lines yet. Once these are hooked up, these are gonna be absolutely solid. So, I'm gonna hook up this first one for you guys to show you what's going on. So we're gonna hook it up to our sink lines. Now, if you've been following along, if you watch this video right here, you'll know we built these in underneath the floor so they come out on the other side of the hallway and they'll hook to the fresh tank that's gonna be back there. So our fresh water from that tank is gonna come in through here. We're gonna tee it off so that we can have cold water going straight to our mixing valve 
as well as cold water going up to where our heat exchanger is. Now the only thing you have to remember is that whatever direction your coolant is running, you want your water to run the opposite direction. So we're gonna go in cold from the top, come back out hot, which will come across to the other side of the mixing valve, go through here, get mixed, and then down through here, which comes down underneath the floor, of course, back up over here, giving us hot water to where our sink's gonna be. So now I'm just gonna do a little speed lapse of us assembling the tube, and while that's happening, I'm gonna try and convince you to scroll down and leave us a comment, and while you're down there, hit that like button. We're working so hard to try and deliver value through our videos and some entertainment, and all I really ask is just a quick comment, just a hello, and hit that like button. That does so much for pushing us out on the algorithm with YouTube. And with our following today of 3,000, over 3,000 people, if just 50% of the people left a comment, left a like, and even shared this video, and we did this on one video, this video, the possibilities are absolutely endless of the number of people we could help. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's get back to our project. <sighs> And there she is complete. What? Oh man, that was a tedious, long, tiring job. Especially running these hose crimpers. On all these, we did what? A hundred, I guess, close to? Really takes it out on the shoulders and the arms, let me tell you. But it's fully complete. Look, look how solid this is all glued in. It ain't going nowhere, just like our test pieces. We got our two valves on the front, we got sink, and we got shower. As you can see, we can turn them, they're tight. They're also nice and tight on the back, where nothing moves, everything's held in place, and all crimped in. So, here, take a look around real quick. two lines left to hook up is this one which would be the intake from the fresh water tank that'll be back there and this is a hot that's gonna go to the rear for our rear shower but I'm at the point now where what job do I do next it's like a game of chess right now as to how it all fits together and which job needs to go in which process but we'll figure that out by the time we get to next week but now I gotta get all cleaned up again it's now like midnight on Sunday, so I need to get to bed because, well, another one of the things that slows us down is work. It really, really cutting into my personal time, and we didn't get in and talk to that about delays. And that's it, my peeps. We have successfully installed the most expensive individual item to our whole van build. The hydronic heating system is finished. Another project complete, another video in the banks, and we are moving forward, my friends. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider doing so. If you have subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe consider hitting the bell. And of course we, we will see you on the next video. Perfect.